Henry, the Chair of the Oversight Investigation Subcommittee, for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. In previous hearings, I've asked who the lead regulator is when it comes to Volcker, and, and I just figured it out today. Uh, Governor Trullo, it's you and it's the Federal Reserve. Um, just based off of the answering of questions, willingness to step in, the deference that others on the panel give to you, I guess when you have five big regulators, independent regulators sitting on the same panel, you know, there, there ends up being an alpha dog. And Governor Trullo, today that's you. Um, so, but I, the, the one takeaway I also have, the other takeaway I have from this hearing is that we still don't know the cost or exactly what this rule will do. That's kind of clear after listening to everyone's testimony and the questions we have today, and, and, or the negative impacts that this, this rule uh, is going to have on the market. But in particular, Chair White, uh, I, I want to ask you about uh, uh, rigorous cost-benefit analysis. Now, um, you know, it, it, you had uh, dissenting opinions uh, within uh, your commission uh, saying that there was not a rigorous cost-benefit analysis performed. What say you? I, I say that uh, we basically, I think all the regulators did. Uh, well, I'm just asking about you. All right, just yeah. us. Uh, thor thoroughly uh, addressed the economic considerations related to the Volcker Rule. Uh, the proposal teed up specific uh, questions uh, to elicit uh, alternatives, costs, impact information. I know our economists at the SEC were very much uh, involved in that. And then I think I've listed a few of the, there, there are several others, many others actually, not many others, several other important ones where we've responded as a result of that economic analysis and, uh, and to the comments that raise those economic uh, impacts. So where could I see this rigorous cost-benefit analysis? Well, I, th I think you'll see it if, if you look throughout the adopting release uh, to how we addressed uh, the comments that raise those economic issues. Do you have specific page numbers or a section that I could reference? I, I could give you some, either, either you know, provide them to you after this if, uh, or give you some now if, if, uh, on some of the issues that I've already mentioned, well, but uh, happy to provide it. In, in uh, your predecessor's term as, as chair of the SEC, uh, ask uh, Mary Shapiro about this. She codified as a matter of policy with the Securities and Exchange Commission a memo in the summer of 2012 on cost-benefit analysis. Did you hear, adhere to the principles of that memo? This was a, the, the guidance wasn't specific, the framework of the guidance wasn't specifically uh, applied to the, to the adopting uh, release. This was an, ad, an adoption. We were authorized under the Bank Holding Company Act. All the agencies proceeded uh, in that manner. I think the reality of the joint uh, rulemaking, no one agency specific uh, individualized procedures were applied to it. We were all bound under the APA. Uh, yes, but and, you and also with further, that, which included the economic considerations. Your predecessor bound your agency to adhere to the memo and the principles within that memo on, on cost-benefit analysis. I'll follow up with you on this. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm very committed because, to that guidance as well. Well, this is the biggest rule making you'll undertake probably in your tenure, uh, probably in my tenure in Congress. And so uh, that's why I think it's important that you, had, you did adhere to that principle or not. Commissioner Gallagher, in his dissent, uh, spoke of a fatal flaw um, in this rule and asked for a two to three week delay and reproposal. Um, and, uh, and, and also says that this, um, this is a, um, it's a, it's riddled with, uh, with, with problems. Obviously, you, you disagree. Would you speak to that? Yeah, it, it ultimately, I mean, I know two of our commissioners uh, and I independently uh, considered the issue of whether a, a reproposal, you know, made sense was required. I obviously took counsel on the legal issue uh, from our general counsel, not required, and I don't think my judgment at, at uh, ultimate judgment was that it also would not be you know, wise uh, to do a reproposal. I mean, I think we'd again, we've had a lot of folks comment both on the panel and among the members about uh, the, the two year period of thoroughness, uh, the number of engagements, both by comment letters and meetings uh, that we had. There was also persisting market uncertainty that, uh, that obviously a, a further sure. delay sure. Uh, would have perpetuated that. Sure. So that ultimately uh, I judge that was not either required or, or, or the right course to take. So I have a final question. It's really just yes or no. Uh, Governor Trullo, uh, uh, Chairman Greenberg, um, are you all prepared uh, through, joint, uh, through a, a joint process to 
uh, rule on the second round of living wills as being insufficient? Are you all prepared to do that? What we are we are right now engaged. The two agencies are right now engaged in the discussion, the evaluation of the of the uh, uh, resolution plans that have come in and what next steps to take. And so we we surely are moving forward. I think the answer is yes, Congressman. Who are we going to? Okay. Uh, chair now recognizes the uh, gentleman from Connecticut, Mr. Himes, for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. 